Everything good, yeah? All right. All right, gentlemen, it's good to see all of you over here. Um, a quick word. Thank you, sponsors, for Red Thought Adventures. All right. Thank you, Tribe Hyatt, for the food as well. All right. Today, I'm going to talk about IT architectures. I promise my, my talk will not be taking too long. It will not be too deep and too technical. In fact, I don't aim it to be. All right. So before I go into what about, about IT architectures, perhaps a quick introduction of me. Right, my name is Sean over here. I have been doing PHP development for about 12 years or so. Right, I have been in management for about six years. So I've handled a lot of projects. Personally, I have done about 20, uh, more than 20 software development lifecycle, personally and also part of a team. Right, my primary language has always been PHP. That's why today we are, I'm here speaking with you in a PHP meetup. But over the many years that I've done a lot of projects, I've handled many other languages. Surely some of you have seen some of them, you have tried it on your own. All right, so IT architectures. Before I go into um, the topic on, on this, this matter, I'm gonna give you an example of an, a typical conversation between a client and a developer. I'm sure most of you are developers over here. All right, this is gonna be an exaggerated uh, conversation just to give you an idea, all right? So let's say we start with the clients. Hey, I want to um, implement a Facebook login on Magento, all right? All right, so as a de developer, you'll say, all right, cool, I will, I will, I'll let you know it's gonna take about 100 hours to complete, all right, plus minus here and there, all right? All right, cool. So the client comes back again the next day and says, oh, I want to have a Facebook login in another page as well, all right? All right, cool. Not a problem, since the feature has already been implemented, I'll say, maybe I'll take five hours to complete. All right, easy, peasy. And then came the, 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 uh, um, the client comes back again and say, I want to develop this in a mobile app. I want it in Android and iOS, all right? All right, I'll take about, mm, maybe say, 80 hours to complete. And then the client goes, what, why? I mean, Facebook, you took like five minutes to re-implement it on another page, but why does it take 80 hours to do a mobile app this time around, right? Doesn't make sense, and to a client, I understandably, they wouldn't understand, right? IT architectures, we, are, um, developers on our own, we will understand better, right? How about another conversation over here? This time around is between uh, implementing design, all right? So I wanna say, the client comes to you, I wanna implement a certain piece of design in, uh, in my Magento website. It looks very nice and cool. Right, but as a developer, if you come back and you say, no, this one will not work in a mobile device. And then a client goes a bit unreasonable, right, and say, no, you are a developer, you have to make this work, all right? I'm sure some of you might have encountered a situation similar like this, right? And then you go and try to explain, no, it doesn't work. You see, this is, this is your mobile device, but there's no hover function. You, uh, this one is good for a desktop. It doesn't work this way. You're on touch screen as well. There's 3D animation and all those stuff. Your clients, Android, sys, um, low end high phones will not work. And they will have some time to un difficulty understanding, understandably, right? They do not have technical knowledge over here. So that's where IT architectures come in, right? where you can share about IT, IT architectures on a broader level so that people can understand better. Personally, as a developer, this might help you during your development as well, particularly if you're communicating with other developers, right? So, IT architecture, like a building, we start with level one, we have the matrix, right? I'll go on to explain later on what it is, followed by, of course, level two, the connector, right? We have the interface and, of course, the reality, right? Like any building that you built over here as an architect, you have to start building from level one or all the way to the rooftop. You do not start building the rooftop first. It will not make sense, right? So at level one, we have the matrix. What is the matrix? According to Marian Webster, it means something from which something else originates from, right? So basically, your business logic, your, your hardware, your networking and all those stuff, all these infrastructures, this is where it comes from. So, when it comes to the matrix, you have to make decisions as a developer. Where, what OS am I going to put it on? Is it on Linux? If it's on Linux, is it on Ubuntu, CentOS, Red Hat, so on and so forth. All right, how about language over here? Are we going to deal with PHP, Python, Ruby? Right, these are the languages we have to decide. 
How about storage over here? Are we going to use file systems? Are we going to use S3? Right? Or are we going to use something else? Clustering. Do you need clustering over here? Right? How about encryption? Are you gonna you need to protect your data, passwords, and all those stuff, right? Database, are we gonna use relational database, no SQL, or even plain file text storage? How about caching? Caching so that you know all those expensive queries that we do, right, will be much faster and cheaper. Alright, how about business logic? Authentication. Does your website need authentication? How about access control list? Alright, do you need data validation? Right? If you're going to deal with emails, if you're going to collect emails and all those stuff, you need to make sure your data is an email. It cannot be something else or something bogus over here. You have to do more. Right? So there's a lot of things right, on the matrix level. Right? Perhaps you guys, I'm opening this to the public. Can you share with me more on your experience? What else do you think is in the matrix? Anyone? Sorry? Oh, UX list goes in a higher level. Higher level. Something technology. How about soft um, hardware and all those stuff? No worries, let's move on. Right. So scale, like, scale, like, how many things new application or is it like I'm expecting a heavy load and all so is it scale? You're scaling? Yeah. Scaling? That's right. Part of clustering. In fact this is um, a sub of clustering also. Very good. All right, so we move on over here. This time around, we are doing with the connector. Right? What are we connecting to? Right? You are connecting the matrix to the interface over here. Right? In this case, what are the examples? Right? We have the external and the internal right, connectors we are dealing with. If you are doing it external, perhaps your Magento website is going to send an email when someone makes an order. Right, makes sense, right? So you're going to need to connect to an NTP. Are we doing a Facebook login? Then certainly we need Facebook API, all right? Or how about web scraping? Maybe we need to. We need to check out on our competitors and all those stuff, all right? So we do web scraping and so on and so forth. You're going to use Google or you're going to use um, somebody else's API, Yahoo API, perhaps. This will be external. On the internal side, we have things like JSON, the, uh, one of a uh, protocol or language. Right? We have XML, maybe even binary. Now, this is particularly used if your, web, your systems are designed in such a way that you use microservices. So you have a lot of little services running. You need to communicate with each other. You will need something like this internally. All right? So next up. We have the interface over here. That's where the gentleman, you say UX, right? It will, be, it will be related over here, right? The interface. When you're designing, you need to de determine what is the device or the platform you're going to use, right? Are we going to deal with browsers, right? Or are we going to deal with mail clients over here, right? D designing for mail clients and designing for browsers, UX is going to be vastly different, right? That goes without saying, on mobile devices, definitely going to be very different. Are we going to do with native app or on a website on a mobile device? Vast difference. How about consoles over here? Are we going to develop something for a console like PlayStation or Xbox? Maybe we are going to do something more futuristic. We are going to be augmented reality or virtual reality. These interfaces are going to be very different if you are going to design. Furthermore, today we are going to move on to the Internet of Things. If you are going to interface with a machine, you're going to be, going to be very, very different. Right? These are the interfaces that we all decide. I'm sure there will be more you guys can think of right? and, and, and everything else. Next up will be the reality. The reality is the one where a user or a machine, in the case of IoT, interacts with. Right? So, if you're going to deal with a website like Magento, then it's going to be obvious you're going to need to deal with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Right? Are we going to deal with marketing? Then perhaps you're going to deal with search engine optimization so that a robot like Googlebot can read our website. Remember over here, it's not just the human that is interacting with your architecture. Another machine can be the one interacting with yours. Are we going to deal with responsive design so that we can have multiple different screens from the largest 4K screen to the tiniest mobile screen over here? How about a content distribution network? 
right? Very important if you're going to is your audience international, overseas, and all those stuff. You need to make sure your website serves them fast. Otherwise, in the Magento context, right, you lose your customer. Are we going to deal with keyboard and mouse, or are we dealing with touch screen over here? Makes a world of difference. How about camera? Is your app or something going to touch on camera or camera APIs? You need to consider this. Or do you need location-based selling? Or are you going to play with Pokemons? Right? You're going to need GPS as well. And so on and so forth. There are a lot of things you need to give into consideration when you're dealing with architectures. Right? So, in a, let's say we, we deal with a very simple setup. All right? How does Magento fit into the four levels architecture over here? Right? Let's give a simple understanding. Firstly, Magento, you're probably going to deal with authentication. Right? If you're going to deal with many people administrating it, perhaps you're going to deal with access control list. Right? So you can control how your team access. Right? So of course, your manager will have more access. A staff or an accountant will have maybe restricted access. You're going to need to deal with data validation as well. If somebody gives you an email, you have to make sure it, it is an email. You cannot escape it, right? can't give something bogus over here. Are you going to build this on a LAMP stack? Right? Then perhaps you will need to decide on Linux and all the stuff. Maybe you're going to host it on Azure. This will all be at level one matrix. Right? So let's say again, back to Magento, you're definitely going to build a website for sure. Right? But you also want to send an email. Right? For obvious reasons, when you receive an order, Send an email. Let the person know this is the receipt and all the stuff, right? So in a website, right, we're gonna do with browsers, obviously, in most cases, right? And of course, you'll be doing with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, search engine optimization, content distribution, net distribution network, and so on and so forth, <coughs> right? So this will be at level three and level four. Now, if you guys notice, I missed out level two as missing. Why? Because in not in not every case. Or every architecture requires a connector. In this case, in Magento, everything is built into one package. There's only one service. You're not connecting to anything else. You don't need a connector, right? But when you're dealing with email over here, down, that's where you need a connector over here. You need to deal with SMTP, obviously. Well, SPF and DKIM are email-related technologies. You need to implement it in your uh, DNS, right? So that you make sure your emails are delivered properly and safely, not flag like spam by your, by your ISP or your client's ISP. Right, like level three over here, the interface, obviously, we are dealing with mail clients. In the mail clients, you have to deal with things like spam filter and all those stuff, right? So yeah, spam assassins, make sure your content is not flagged as spam, otherwise you fail your marketing, right? Of course, in email, you are dealing with HTML version and text version. Vastly different from what you're dealing with a website. Right? So this is some of, of a simple Magento website. But if you're dealing with something a bit more complex, a somewhat complex example, but not realistic, I'm just here for showing you as an example. Again, the four levels, right? Level one, level two, level three, and level four. At level one, let's say you want to build an e-commerce site. Cool. Right? and all the e-commerce features, but e-commerce is the lifeblood of your company. You cannot afford it to go down, otherwise you'll be in serious trouble. Right? So you decide to build, I want clustering. I want clustering in Amazon Web Services. So I build a, lot, a, big, a big cluster over here. Obviously, I'm going to need a website, like the example before. Right? So I do HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and, and make sure I target all the browsers, responsive design, and so on and so forth. Right? On top of that, I want a mobile app. But before that, you need a connector. All right? You need to make sure you build your REST API or your other API so that your iOS or Android can communicate back to the e-commerce site. So in this case, you get a designer to build your iOS version and maybe your Android version as well. Now, you're going to need to send email, but you don't want to use a you, want to use, you don't want to use an external provider. You decided, I want to build my own Zimbra mail server. All right, cool, no problem. And of course, you target your mail clients, HTML version, text version. Right? Next up, 
I want to go beyond emails. I want to send them SMS, right? So if the order is about to reach their doorstep, send them an SMS. So you decided, all right, I'm going to set up an asterisk um, server. I'm going to sign up with a telco, Singtel's M1 Star Hub and all those stuff so that I can send an SMS, right? And of course, people will receive your SMS and all those stuff. Cool, nice, and all those stuff, but I want to go on to the next one. I want to build something exciting, maybe machine intelligence over here. This time around, I built TensorFlow. I want to predict people's um, buying patterns. I want to promote them and all those stuff, right? So I can increase my sales rate. But of course, how am I going to communicate, right? I built my e-commerce website on PHP. TensorFlow is on Python, all right? On top of that, TensorFlow requires GPU. My, my website doesn't need. So I've spin up another machine just for TensorFlow. And they communicate perhaps using TensorFlow Serving, one of the services that TensorFlow provides. And so this is an example of a bit somewhat complex example perhaps some of you will be familiar with. Right? So with the, an understanding of IT architectures, do you think we can improve the conversation we had just now right, between the client and the developer? Right, let's start again. I want to build a Facebook login with Magento. Oh, all right, cool. Right, I'm going to break it down for you, right? In the matrix, I probably need about 20 hours to build, right? The connector will take about 30 hours for me to make sure it works, right? The interface will take about 10 hours, and the reality will be 40 hours. Whoa, why does the reality need 40 hours to build? Oh, it's because we have four major browsers to test on, each one taking about 10 hours. Right. So with this understanding, do you think the client will be able to understand better? Assuming, of course, the client knows about IT architectures. Right. So it goes on. All right. How about another button on another page? Oh, the previous button was well tested on. This time around, I only take five hours to build the same thing again. No problem. I want a Facebook login on my mobile app as well. Right. We have already done the matrix. Right, so it's going to take about another 30 hours to develop the connector, right, and 25 hours each to build on iOS and Android. Right, with such a breakdown, right, assuming again that the client understands IT architectures, maybe he will not contest and be confused. How about another one? The next one, design. I want this design implemented on Magento, right? But this design won't work on mobile devices, and of course, the client comes unreasonably telling you this has to work, right? And you go on to explain. This design is dealing in the reality layer, all right? Yes, a lot of limitations. The interface can't do certain things, right? There's no, there's no power. You need a keyboard and a mouse to handle it, all right? All right? So you decide to tell, you go back to him, I will drop a wireframe specifically for that interface, right? So that your designer can come back with me, right? With a design that I can implement properly and easily. Don't you think this will be a little bit better, right? So, this is more or less about IT architectures, right? Would there be any questions or suggestions for me to improve my next talk? Yes. Okay, yeah, so because I actually come from a UX background, so I'm focusing less on UI, but more towards on the experience design side of things. So, just uh, one, one, back, one question before, or the one, level one, two, three, four even begins. Then what exactly should be the ground zero? Is like, do you, do you ask what the client actually wants in the first place? Because like, I, I actually work with a company, so then they got this client say, oh, I want to copy this website. Copy this website.com. Uh, make sure this website.com, uh, but use my logo. So then there's like, okay, you say, yeah, okay, can, no problem. Uh, but do you understand what's the functionality, functionality behind this website? Oh yeah, okay, because this website, they're actually doing an e-commerce. Okay, so uh, what, what niche market are you trying to target? You know, it's like all these kind of things where sometimes the client don't exactly know what they want. So in, according to, uh, in, in my point of view, like, it's like, uh, Information architecture is actually the, the layout of actually trying to understand uh, what the client wants so that we can uh, standardize across with all the developers, the UX developers, the UI developers as well. That uh, even the CEO, that everyone 
uh, we are actually moving towards the same direction, you know, that uh, we don't have to keep on going back towards the event. But they say, hey, how come when I press this one, uh, how come it's not like that function? You see, hey, you go and see that website. Eh? You see that website, uh? how come I press the, the website, got this function come out, this box come out, but I press the one never, eh? the whole time. My, my developers still facing these kind of uh, questions. Uh, you know, mm. Every time I always can't go and like uh, so the thing is that like some some companies don't actually have the culture of like uh, documentation and uh, actually having the whole uh, <coughs> progress of uh, what needs to be done or what consists of the roadmap or what is a roadmap to begin with in the first place, which is uh, UX. Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. I think I, I think I get the, I understand the struggles go through. I also faced very similar in the past, right? So one of the things that I, I would recommend you is you approach in a way that you give them, give the people an understanding of what architecture is and how it interface. The number one thing you need to tell your team, the team that who does not does the IT is that when you build something, you build from level one, you build from le- the matrix. You cannot build the, the, the top works, the reality. You can't make the interface and expect it automatically to work. So you need to give them a, a good understanding, right? right? Building a website, a HTML is relatively easy. But if you're going to go down deeper into the matrix level, that's the difficulty, right? When you remember just now the slides before I showed you. Let's see, right? Back in the matrix over here. You have a lot of decisions to make. You need to plan carefully, all right? Because if you don't plan carefully over here, right, everything else will be affected, right? Whatever that happens on the matrix level will affect all the way to the top, right? If you're doing it just, let's say, the Facebook button only, why does it take five hours to build? Why does it take just five hours to, to move from one place to another? Because you're just dealing with the reality, right? It does not affect anything else beyond that. But if you're going to build it on, let's say, a mobile platform, like the example before, that will affect a lot. That's why you take, take more hours to, do, to build and to develop. You give them a good understanding. You need to start from the matrix over here. I need to make a decision what kind of data validation you need, what kind of um, business logic you need to implement on the matrix level first before you go on that, oh, over here, if you're going to build um, email, email response, autoresponders, right? Then this is something that's separated from website. An autoresponder is not the same as a website. You need to give them a good understanding. You need to let them know that building something on a mobile app is not the same as building an email and a website as well. So you need to show them, in this case, a model so that people can understand. I hope that answers your questions. Right. Questions or suggestions? If not, then I guess that will be more or less about me. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I'm trying to get the last page. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to get the last page. All right, that would be me. All right, I have a personal blog on my own where I touch on technologies and uh, I write about many things about stuffs, all right? So you can check me out over here, all right? My website is over here. I write about anything and everything technology and sometimes things outside of technology. So just follow me, check me out, and that will be end of my talk. Thank you.